Yes, so we're back with uh, part two. And uh, like I said, what were your thoughts with WEC and also your thoughts on that title fight with uh, JT Taylor? When I first heard about JT Taylor, I knew about him from the beef he had with Matt Lennon. Mm. And to me, it was just whatever beef he had with Matt Lennon, I had nothing to do with. And so, uh, going into the fight, I was like, all right. Another tough guy. Well, I used every bit of judo to throw him all around that cage. And literally, I just made it an exhibition. Check this out. Bam. Get up. Watch this. Papa, I would throw him. And he even said later that he was worried about the spinning back first. Mm -hmm. But he's now starting, he now runs a CBD company. In Oregon. Yeah, he actually sent me some stuff. So, I mean, I laughed because I didn't even get the... I didn't understand the complexion of the belt. Yeah. Until one day, Dana White was in the audience. He was there. And before the fight, he asked me, God damn, Shoney, how many belts you got? I said, the only one I ain't got is the one that you in charge of. So it don't matter. Oh wow! And it was an attitude, and I didn't. I didn't. Even, I never realized because I'm. My job was to go out there and fight, try to make money to pay for my babies, my boys. Mm. I didn't. It was not until later. As a matter of fact, 2006 on the Ultimate Fighter, I did not know I was ranked fourth in the world. I never knew that until they said it on the broadcast. I was like, what? <laughs> really? Did you think that you were ranked number four? I never I never thought about ranking. Although, the idea, okay, here's a little bit of quirkiness with me. So, one of the other reasons how I got into fighting was because of my daughter. She's now married with I'm a granddad. When she was going to private school, I was started to fighting the underground circuit first to pay for her private school tuition. Then my friends were talking, my training partners were talking. So I don't know who it was that talked about starting a t contest. Who can win the most title belts? <laughs> Well, we know how that ended up. Yeah, I think, yeah. Yeah, we figured that out. So I became addicted after I took the lead. And winning belts was like a sport to me. The martial arts part. And I'm going to keep it 100. I don't know how many viewers you get. This is about to be that other side. Out of the men's locker room. I literally would win belts to impress women to go to the after party, get them hot and bothered on the dance floor by doing salsa. I would take the girls back to the room. Before that, I would hide my money and put my belt underneath the bed. So if I get, if I fell asleep, she wouldn't go sneak out with my belt and my money. <laughs> Smart, yeah. Yeah. So, my f idea of fighting and having fun was because I did not want to get hurt because I wanted to literally be around women a lot. Yeah. And I was also working on trying to get on Dancing with the Stars. So, I always fought with a goal to not get hurt. So, I'd go to the after party and practice and hit on women and dance also. <laughs> so, there is uh, some perks winning all those championships. Oh my God! Yeah, I even I would lie sometimes, just embellish on the story. Yeah, I I, I put the fire out of Godzilla and I pin King Kong. <laughs> <laughs> and one time I was in Las Vegas in the Billionaire Boys Club, and this guy was being an asshole. And I I've always prided myself on being cool with everybody. That's why we talking like we homies right now. <laughs> this guy was like. I went up to the club, you know, everybody had an American Express black card. Well, Scott Adams, the promoter, owner of the WEC, 
flew me out in a private jet because his buddy was a fan of mine. And literally, we up in the club, this guy says, uh, you guys have been nice too. I said, thank you. I literally said, thank you. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. He says, yeah, what do you know about this? He slapped his black card on the table, on the bar. I said, oh, that's cute. You spend them, I said, you waste a million dollars a year uh, buying shit at the club. He said, excuse me? He had the big titty girls with it. And the girls are like, well, what? He said, how can you? He said, what can you do to do that? She said, well, how'd you put it? They were like, top that. I'm like, I said, are y'all tripping? They did not notice for any moment I'm wearing a world title belt around my waist. Oh, man. Right. Yeah. So I took my belt off and I dropped it on the bar. I said, motherfucker, if you had 10 black cars, you can't buy one of them. I said, and the bartender was like, whoa. They said, what is the WEC? I said, World Direction Championships. And the girls started laughing. Yeah. Is it on your cage fighter? I said, like, yeah. I'm the baddest motherfucker in the room. Look, looking at the guy. I said, now you stay here. Since you're going to buy me a drink, I'm going to take your girls on the floor. We're going to do dance and salsa. <laughs> I don't know how to dance salsa. At the end of this, you will. I walked her. I took his girls from him and literally walked into the DJ with his two big titty girls. Said, hey, you got any salsa music up on that? He said, for you, Mr. International, I got something. I danced salsa with two women in Las Vegas. And one of the boys clubs. That's yeah. Well, we'll get some water then, damn it. <laughs> oh, well, you might be, ain't got no water in the fridge. No, I'm doing an interview. And I, that's what I do, Durango. So I'm getting harassed by my by the guys. <laughs> yes, yeah, so at the cook. Oh yeah, don't love this one. It cost me two fucking hundred. I hate it, but I love it. Makes you look like you put on like 20 pounds. Oh, yeah, no, it feels feel like I'm bulletproof. <laughs> but yeah, that's what happened. So I did salsa in Las Vegas at the club and we took the girls back to him. He said, How you like me now? And literally, he learned, I said, You never know who the hell you're talking to. And that's one thing that my grandfather always told me. Treat people as you always want them to treat you. Because you never know who the fuck you're going to run into. And that's how it all came to be is because I trained hard, party hard, have fun all the time. And the cool part is that I'm here to tell you the stories about it and you can ask me this 10 years later or 11 years later and I'm going to tell you the same game story. <laughs> You know, I ain't lying because the truth ain't gonna have a good memory. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's such, it's so cool. I mean, this is crazy. Like, he didn't even, like, he saw the belt and he didn't even think of anything. Like, you know? Right. I mean, right. you see a belt and right away, you're like, whoa, I'm not messing with that guy. But right. he was dumb enough to do it. So it's just, it's crazy. Yeah. And it's, you know, and I laugh at guys like that. I'm like, dude, you don't know what the hell you fucking with. And then all of a sudden you get checkmated and you got a black card by a guy who's in the club partying for free. And that's how I've always prided myself. I'm like, I'm not going to go out to these, these clubs and waste my money, you know, on drinks. The hell no. And it's, so, and it's so crazy, so, like, you took, and then you took the women, too, and then you went dancing, like, that's pretty, that's so cool. That <laughs> Dude, what are you going to do? Yeah. You see a guy with a 26-pound title belt, and you're looking at this guy like, oh, because most people are, too, even when people talk shit to me, or say stuff to me, I said, Dude, you ain't even the toughest motherfucker in your neighborhood. You may even be the toughest motherfucker in your house. And, and my belt says world champion on it. Yes. No matter what, people go, well, cause I remember one fan was like, it's not a world championship unless it's the UFC belt. I said, well, the UFC fighter can't beat me in karate. A UFC fighter can't beat me in judo. If the judo guy can beat me in judo, I bet you can't beat me in kickboxing. If I can beat me in kickboxing, 
I bet they can't beat me in Greco Roman wrestling. Yeah, the if they can beat me in Greco Roman wrestling, I can beat him in boxing. That's like so, so true because like sometimes like you always see like oh he could beat him in a fight but he can't beat him in a boxing match or a wrestling match or jiu-jitsu match you know right and I laugh and I say yo you you better mean jiu-jitsu I bet I tighten your ass up <laughs> so, uh, another thing I wanted to talk about you know you you know are a true pioneer you know from the beginning you know all these disciplines and cage fighting you know you fought the early days of UFC even the beginnings of WEC and Bellator, did you ever think this sport would hit to mainstream to the present day? I knew something was coming. I just didn't know what was coming. But yeah, yeah damn, when Mickey Mouse took over, that was insane. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. When Disney bought it. Yes. That was insane. And... Now these kids are lose and win a half million dollars. Did you ever think that these fighters would ever make that much money? As Fuck a- no. <laughs> I, still, I get robbed. Yeah. Getty Images is selling two pictures of mine. One for $500, one for $1,800. I found out Michael Moore has used me in a movie called Capitalism. There were two websites with my name on with my name on the t-shirts and I'm like and I'm getting lawyers for this and I heard that the UFC is getting sued and they lost one case already but it wasn't even about the fact that you know how this is now as a business but the crazy part is that now you got a guy who is 23, 24 years old who's a 20 year veteran of martial arts and he owns a school and he's a multiple time world medalist and he's going to walk into fighting in MMA and go his first payday as a school owner because he teaches and owns a school in countryside named Apex House of Grappling. I'm, my goal to help him is to get him into Abu Dhabi so I can see how much money he's going to make. And it's crazy. And the guys are here right now. Some of his guys there's a guy named Shorty Torres, Jose Torres. He's friends with the Sheik. Oh, wow. The Sheik, we're talking about cars. And Shorty said, yeah, I'm about to buy, I'm going to try to get me a new car, another car. The Sheik says, oh, what do you want? He says, well, you know, they, he was able to get a Grand Cherokee. The Sheik laughed at him. He says, no, that's not what you're doing. Now, I'm translating, but I'm telling you what the Sheik said. The Sheik gives him... A Range Rover. A fully loaded Range Rover. Now, he's one of the Titan FC Bantamweight and Flyweight divisions. Well, how much do you think that fully loaded Range Rover cost? A lot of money. How much do you think it's worth? Throw a number. Throw a number. Like 100,000? Okay, everybody in the room, throw a number. Yeah, I'm going to uh, I'll go with 80000 Shorty Torres's Range Rover is priced at, fully loaded from the sheet, $185,000. Whoa. What the fuck? <laughs> Most people that have luxury cars, they have amenities and technical abilities on a vehicle and they never used it I actually watched it yeah and literally when you have that much shit on your truck living in Chicago everything that it can do you know you don't use it because if you have a twin overhead dual cam with a turbo you can't open that bitch up on no street or stretch of road in Chicago that's so crazy you can't. No. You know, and and I can understand how much money those fighters are making over in Abu Dhabi, as it is. Because you know, you know there's some off the record shit going on over there. Oh yeah. I been to Bahrain. I have a bright link that was given to me. And most people don't know what a bright link watch is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
If you don't know, yeah, I don't. <laughs> parallel to a Rolex. Yes. Wow. Right. No, it's right. it's true. Right. Like you said, like the money's over there. Even the UC, you know, they're doing you know things over there as well. Yeah, it's nuts. It's just crazy to see there. the money over there. It's crazy to see the money over there, especially in Abu Dhabi. Man, listen, let me let me let me school you on some shit. Okay, the guys Please. in the room too. To make an island, what do you need to make an island? Water and sand. This is an engineer over here. <laughs> How do you get water to Abu Dhabi? If you're the sheik. A, do you get a big-ass boat and fill it with water? Or B, do you go and have a laser cut a fucking large glacier and ship it all the way to Abu Dhabi and melt the water once you get there? That's some shit Durango would do. <laughs> no. Right. So, yeah. That, did your dad leave? Man, he told me to sit here and wait on him. That's, uh, that's, that's crazy. Man, your devil punch your dad in the belly. I swear. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave this way. I'm going to leave. I, I would have been gone. Uh, <laughs> Morning. My best friend left me hanging. Oh. I've been sitting down here. Let me see if the, if you take his truck. Let him borrow his truck. Unless truck is set up. Hey, nigga, see the house. That would have been gone. We could have been doing this interview on the road. Mm-hmm. I got shit to do. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, another thing. I was in the Marines, so. I have a policy. Leave no man behind. No, for sure. Man, but, he left me behind. But, I'm showing you, I'll, I'll, I'll come get you when I'm done with this meat. Oh, Lord. I'm driving around with these Christmas gifts. And I'm trying to get everything. You know that last minute shit. Oh, yeah. We totally agree. But I'm, a, I'm really ahead because yeah. there's just only a little bit that I have to do. And my older boy asked me some silly shit about a PlayStation Five. That shit ain't happening. <laughs> I, can't, <laughs> I can't find one hood ass thug or granny dude mm-hmm. to get me a PS Five. I even I even scolded a street pharmaceutical representative. Mm-hmm. Also known as a drug dealer. Yeah. <laughs> I said, motherfucker, you can get heroin, blow, crank, weed, coke, all types of shit. Guns, but you can't get one PS5. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking you. Yeah. He was like, dude, you know you lucky. He said, I ain't lucky because I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> put that gun on your hip. Kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> And I walked out. They were like, did you talk to people like that? I said, fuck yeah. <laughs> I'm like, man. Like my buddy George, he didn't have to leave me. Shit. Now I'm going to stop at Taco Bell. I was, every day in my life, you're getting the inside, back side story shit. Where I'm, I'm on a piece of paper I write down, I make a task list. This is what I would do for fighting of what I'm going to work on and what I'm going to get accomplished on the day. Mm-hmm. Well, George has sent me back today because I would write down like at least 13 different things. And I mean, I'm really meticulous. Like, get mm-hmm. up, brush it. I'm writing this down. Brush my teeth, take a shower, shave my face, do the interview, go train Nick. Go, you know, I mean, I just shit like that. So I had 40 some concussions. So I try to keep my brain working. So that's how I'm able to function, and I play bejeweled and thug life. So if you ever get a, a, a thug a thug life notification, that's me. My bad. You ain't gotta play. But the whole fight game for me has just been over the top ridiculous. 
say the least. Yeah, and the, you just said it right now with the concussions, you know, um, how important is that now today, you know, with these uh, young kids, you know, doing martial arts, kind of going, you know, full blown in, in the in the practice room? You know? and this one, I tell them a lot of them, I said, they don't, sparring should not be super hard. You got to try to preserve yourself. And if you drill, just drill. You can get a great workout, get your timing right. You know, there's sometimes you may have to spar hard, mm -hmm. but not every damn day. Think about the hold on. I don't know about me three tacos for cranes. I'm hungry. No worries, Jim. Uh, take the time. How you doing? I'm gonna have three uh those nacho Dorito local tacos. And a Baja Blast. Apple? Yeah. Do you want a regular or supreme? Supreme. Supreme? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I need to know. Nope. What kind of sauce do you need? None. Oh? Nope. Alright, what do you want? Alright, I'm back. But yeah, just talking about like with sparring and all that, like these these fighters today, they do such hard sparring. Yeah. And for what? You go you gonna, you gonna dump all your venom in practice? In practice. Why? No, it's for, for you know, it's totally true, you know. Even at the gym we train in, you know, we do, you know, our point sparring because we do a lot of karate and you know, it it might get to flow, especially with point fighting you know, you know, it's a lot of, you know, f footwork, and they're not. They're just trying to go for the headshot and try to knock us well, out, you know? If I was to come to y'all and do a seminar, you would be shocked as shit on what I do with y'all. Because, I, like I said, I do seminars, so I'll teach. I don't teach double legs. Mm -hmm. I see no point. So I teach the judo. Then I do a lot of focus mate work with people. And... And then if I, because I, I know how to work this, like a black word fight. Mm. I train with Roy Jones Jr.'s coach. I work with Mike Tyson and Floyd Mayweather Sin. So, to me, like when you see Floyd with uh, Senior working this with Junior, I can do the same damn thing. If you ever catch one of my live feeds, we train somebody, you'll see, like, holy shit. I'm like, yeah, that's another depth of portion of my resume that's not. On ink, and then when people see this shit, they're like, "Dude, you see it like it's like yeah, like it's I'm drinking water." Yeah, mm. know how to do it. Mm. I'm a master instructor of combat, and I never thought they would ever come to be full fruition of it, saying that, but it's true. And I love teaching, and when I train people, whether it's the the martial artist or it's the fighter. Or well, the chick that wants her magical four, Lucky Charms, a love arrow, a horseshoe, a teardrop, and a question mark. What's that, you may ask? You, I know you're wondering, what, what, what's that? Mm -hmm. The love arrow is that, that flat center with that little arrow the women love. They they love to have one, we love to see them with it. The teardrop, mm -hmm. that's the vet medialis, that thigh, that, that, that teardrop muscle on the thigh. The horseshoe is toned mm -hmm. trice. That question mark. Yes. You don't know the question mark is on a woman. <laughs> Come on. Y'all know what that is. Yeah, Tim. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, that's, that's the four. That's, that's the, the lucky charms of fitness. And also, uh, like, and also, like you said, you teach. You teach. What is the biggest joys you get out of teaching your students? Hold up one second. Oh. Brisket. Where y'all at anyway? Oh, uh, we're from uh, California. Oh, uh, can't stand y'all. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 it's cool here in Chicago. Yeah, because we know yeah, you're, you're from Chicago. Um, but also, you know, I want to ask, you know, since you teach, what is the biggest joy you get out of teaching your students? The biggest thing I'm teaching them, like, when I'm with your people, is. 
I cover pretty much like most of my clients right now are, are judo. I've got two like tomorrow. Like, like tomorrow is boxing because I have two women that are trying to get in shape, and I'm using the boxing method. And then after them, I have a mother son is working on judo. Then I have Nick Spacek. I'm turning him for MMA. And I have somebody else. So kickboxing. So I cover the basic, the major disciplines of what you see in modern day. But also, like, oh, go ahead. Uh, but also, like, also, like, want to go back real quick. I also wanted to talk about um, the Ultimate Fighter. You were part of that show. What was that process like? And what was it like being in the house in the environment in Ultimate Fighter? I laughed because I knew I was there to entertain and I was not going to get a chance to win that title belt. And. I mean, every reality show has somebody that causes drama. Yes. And when I looked around and my castmates, I knew what I, I knew who I was. And even I was really trying to train to win. Nobody would train with me. They didn't want to drill. Everybody was just wanting to play on the ground. I'm like, dude, jujitsu is a part of the fight, but that's not the only part of the fight. Mm -hmm. and I was like ugh nobody went to drill Greco-Roman everybody was worried about double legs and even Randy Couture I'm like I'm not gonna work out with y'all doing double legs Randy said did you even wrestle see I was fourth in the nation fourth in the Olympic trials I was on two world teams for freestyling Greco-Roman and he was like, what? I said, yeah. I got the pictures of me at the Olympic training center. No big deal. <laughs> One of the guys was like, yeah, right. I said, well, you're going to call Coach Kenny Mundy and ask him if I was there? Go right ahead. 88 Olympic gold medalist went unscored upon in the 88 Olympics, winning the gold medal. Him and Dan Gable did it. And they were like, oh, shit. I'm like, yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> it's just so crazy because, like, you're a champion in everything you've done. with Either it was wrestling, karate, you know. <clears throat> with now, what is – are you still fighting or are you retired? or what, what No, is I'm never retiring from this because I, I have a bad diet. You see how I stopped at Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> so – if I stop training, if I retire, I'm going to get fat. We've seen Matt Sarah, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Shit, I'm I'm going to do this jiu-jitsu tournament January 16th. I'm going to do the judo tournament, and I'm going to do a the Muay Thai tournament. I'm going to try to win three belts this year, coming year. Nice. Or, or more. I don't care. It's just this is a part of my life. And what also, like, what is the motivation of going into, especially today, what is the motivation going into these tournaments still? Is it still the same as if you're starting the sport? Well, I have a, an exit strategy intended that basically I think about my four children and my granddaughter. I want each of them to have seen dad slash granddad compete and I want them to see me win and I want to inspire them I want to inspire the next generations of athletes to show them if you put your mind to something you set forth an action plan and go after it in spite of, that's my ethos. In spite of, in spite of what holds me back, that tries to hold me up, that tries to intervene or interrupt. 
in spite of. I've gone through struggles and strife throughout my life. Mm. Wanted a girlfriend, even more so I wanted a wife. But I'm not married. My three-year-old daughter, mother, don't want to be with me anymore, but yet she lives in my apartment. Inversely, I've had, I, I know one particular woman, you're going to look up something fine? Her name is Mari, M-A-R-I-A-S-P. This little, little mama was a gymnast for Norway. She was yeah. on the Northwest Marine Corps powerlifting team. She was a bikini model. Wow. She also go to a bench press. That's right, bench press, and rep out two twenty five. Wow. She's a, at least a thirteen time world champion on bench press. Mm. Pounds. She bench more than three times her body weight. A week after the world title, she sent me a video of her bench pressing for one max rep of 405. Yeah, when you look at that picture and videos, I will know you will see it because there's a video of her pulling an A4 Skyhawk fighter jet. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. I'm like, oh, wow. I know. He does some, cra does some crazy ass shit. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm getting, and she calls herself the Buns of Steel. <laughs> her, her little ass was on America's Got Talent. She picked up Nick Cannon over her head. Yeah, so I, I see that picture right here. Yeah. Get the cutest little booty on it and everything. <laughs> She's a cheap man. We've been friends forever. That's oh, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. But um, I want to talk about also like when you look back at your career, what was the best moment of your career? What was very very insightful actually. What was the pinnacle of my career? Honestly, it hasn't happened yet. I just, I feel that there's still things that I should be doing and not yet accomplished. And I want to accomplish what drives me. Right now, a GMC pickup truck, mm -hmm. but it's it's a question unanswered. Yes. That's what drives. I look at when I saw Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. For eight rounds, they fought. It was a draw, but we all know Mike won. Yeah. But for me, it's a question on that. Can I do judo, jujitsu, and Muay Thai? And then win three different belts and three different disciplines, and then go crazy and try to get either a boxing title belt or yet another MMA title belt? Well, for the age of 50, Yeah. Would that shock the hell out of you? But also, like, when you look back now, like, what, as of now, what are your goals right now? Like, what do you want to do next? Try to get into movies. Try to get these losses settled so I can buy my own house. So I can have a house so damn big <laughs> that I can have my, my children come by and live with me if they want. And... All the things I've done, I'm still not happy 
I didn't make any money in fighting. The UFC underpaid me. I had bad management. But if I get a chance to go back into movies, I've done movies as an extra. If I if these two biopics documentaries come out, you know, have a talk show, give back to the masses what I've been through and not just in one isolated interview like I'm doing now. Mm-hmm. You can you can probably imagine how I speak with absolute ease. But like I said, the truth don't need a good memory. But the idea of what I've done and those that have done by far much less than have made more than. I'm pretty de- I know 100% Matt Sarah made more money losing than I did winning. Mm -hmm. And essentially, I'm not giving up because I want that go I want that platinum ring. I want that giant fat bank account so I can relax. Because I'm a man that hustles hard in the yard every day. I go to seminars and I go to wherever, and people, when I've set my belt, so they go, like, Wait, who the hell? How did you do that? I said, well, give me, give me a million dollars, I'll tell you a story. And when movie directors and people have heard, my, heard me speak, like you, mm-hmm. I have had them all, without fail, hanging on every word. And I don't mind. I don't want to die. And all of a sudden, everybody wants to make money on me. I didn't even talk to you about my art. I paint pictures. I went to art school before I was a fighter. I'm an innovator and inventor. Hell, I changed the game of MMA forever. Yes. And I don't know anybody else for what they do or what they've accomplished. No, I, I, I was never hanging a bill. Oh no, everything um, you know, everything you know, yeah, looking at, you know, this your record and everything, yeah, everything you did, you you earned it champ and you know uh, from, from me and Alex, we want to say thank you, you know, for giving so much to the sport, you know. Without you and the many other fighters, you know, this wouldn't oh be possible. Oh, my God. You know, I know so many of guys that didn't make it in the US. That were amazing. Mm. Even if they made it to law, they were still amazing. One guy who never made it, yes. 88 wins, 12 losses. Jimmy Theobald. Hmm. The guys that you won't hear of. I don't know if Tyrone Roberts made it either. I mean, it was just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I fought a guy named Shannon Rich. Yes, yes, he saw that one. He didn't make it to the UFC. I fought him for a, a, a super fight title belt. I got that belt as well. Yes. Yes, he watched that fight, yeah. Mm-hmm. In Arizona. But also, I wanted to ask, you know, there's a lot of listeners out here that are, you know, want to become fighters. What advice can you give out to a young guy that wants to be a fighter? Oh, my God. You, I love telling everybody this. Train harder today than you did yesterday. Train harder tomorrow than you did today. Make set forth an action plan and go after it. Don't let nothing hold you back, hold you up, intervene or interrupt. And comically serious, never work in a strip club. If somebody offers your job in a strip club, say no. (laughs) Because I will tell you that not one, but two of my children's mothers are former strippers. 
Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, oh, yeah, that's, that's good advice. I mean. That's, that's, that's the most important. Yeah. And one of which is an ex playing of R. Kelly. Oh, no, that's, a, yeah, that's, that's interesting. Well, I, I right. didn't know that, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. But like I said, you know, great advice, especially for any man or woman who wants to be a fighter, you know. Yeah. And don't ever stay with somebody who's not supported. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I always think it's a, it's it's important to have a great support system. Great surrounding around you, you know. Especially, yeah. yeah. This is going to be a hard, hard life. Absolutely. And you got to have a support system. If you have somebody at home as a support system, cut them loose. Mm -hmm. So we're getting towards the end of the show. Um, once again, you know, we thank you very much for, for being with us. You know, it's, it's a real honor and to have a legend like yourself to be honest. So we thank you very much. It's my pleasure. And also, uh, do you want to plug in anything to the fans, any social media where they could find you? Joni Carter on Instagram. On Facebook, Mr. International Shoney Carter on YouTube or Shoney Carter Uninterrupted. Subscribe. If you have in town or live in town, I'm at Apex House of Grappling in Countryside, 51 East Plainfield Road with Nick Spacek. Come on by. I'll give you a free week. All right? And if you want me to do a, me to a seminar, 773-698-2224. Text me first and tell me what you want. Because I got what you need. All right. You heard it from uh, Shawnee Cotter. Uh, once again, man, uh, real honor. And we thank you so much for being on the show. Hey, it was my pleasure, my privilege, my honor. We thank you, man. We had lots of fun just hearing from everything you've you've done in your career, man. It's it should be a movie, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, if there's ever a movie, I'll let you know about it. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, Champ. We really appreciate it. And this is going to be the end of the Championship on the Line podcast with Knockout. Uh, I'm Alex. I'm Richard. And we'll see you guys on next time. Thanks, guys. Take care.